Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 of the Low Poly hand paint series. In this episode we'll go from the default cube to a stylized airplane similar to the X4 Stormwing that used to be in Fortnite. During my 100 episodes of the 10 minute modeling challenge I did a lot of modeling, including a triplane in episode 98. You could check out that video, any of the other episodes or even my long learn low poly modeling video in Blender if you want to get some more detailed help with modeling. I'm going pretty fast past this part because it's mainly a lot of E to extrude and S to scale with the occasional Ctrl R for loop cut and I to inset. I did spend a bit longer modeling this airplane because I knew I was going to have to add seams and manually UV unwrap it and I wanted to get a decent topology that it wouldn't be too tricky to unwrap. I also use smooth shading on the faces, which is new to me. I nearly always use flat shading when I do low poly work, but for my hand painted models, I want it to look like it has more polygons than it really has. And I want the metallic surfaces to have smooth reflections. I didn't use any references for this airplane. I tried to remember that Fortnite plane and I remembered that it was a biplane with two wings and that it had two guns. I also remembered some sort of an engine shield in the front and parts of the engines sticking out, so that's what I went for. I also wanted it to have a cartoony, bulky look to go with the hand-painted textures. Some of the edges I marked sharp, but to be perfectly honest, I don't feel like I've learned when to use sharp compared to adding additional loop cuts and bevels, but I'll probably get the hang of it at some point. I also have to care about saving texture space. I delete interior faces as I go. For example, the inner faces of the wings will never be rendered, so I deleted those. The front engine shield got a bit quirky, and I spent longer on that than I wanted. Normally, I'd make a plane like this in maybe 20 minutes, but knowing I had to UV unwrap it and that I was going to spend hours texture painting this model, I wanted to spend more time modeling it, just to be sure. When I add new parts to the plane, I like to select a nearby face and press Shift D to duplicate it. Then I move it into place, rescale it, and I extrude the new object that I need. I did that for the engine part, the curved pipes, and the wheel supports. For the guns and the nose cone, I added geometry separately with Shift A instead, because it was faster to get the cylinder and cone shapes in place that way. The propeller blade I extruded from a copied face of the nose cone. After I shaped it somewhat like a propeller blade, I separated it to a new object and I added the array modifier. I created a new empty object and I used that as a rotational offset for the array modifier to create four propeller blades. Before we go into UV unwrapping and texture painting, I want to mention that I've been speaking to GameDev.TV recently and I'm excited to hopefully create some courses with them in the near future. You may know some of the instructors there, one of them is Grant Abbott, who's been creating great Blender content for years. Even though my courses may be a while away, I can already now give you a sweet package deal on three existing courses that I've handpicked especially for my audience. The three courses are the Unreal Engine 5 Blueprints First Person Shooter by Steven Ulibarri, the Complete C-Sharp Unity Developer 3D Online course by Rick Davidson, and the Blender Character Creator version 2.0 for Video Games Design course by Grant Abbott. Use the affiliate link in the description to get 85% off the original price. Not only do you get a great deal, but you also help my channel as I earn a commission. And now it's time to move on to UV unwrapping. I try to think like I'm cutting out an object with scissors, and I unwrap it in my mind. For this wing, I'm selecting the edges around the tip, and the edge along the wing that I think will be viewed the least. Then I right-click and click on Mark Seam. The wing is then unwrapped by going to the UV menu and selecting Unwrap. I repeat this process for all the wings and fins. It would be possible to unwrap half the plane with the mirror modifier, but I don't want symmetrical camouflage paint and wear on the plane, so I applied the mirror modifier before I started unwrapping. I am aware that this reduces the resolution available for texturing, but I will try to overlap some of the UVs where possible for things like wheels, the wheel support, the gun and some engine parts. Since I'm adding fewer seams to get larger UV islands, stretching is a concern. By clicking on the drop-down at the top and ticking Display Stretch, the UV islands are colorized where blue is no stretching. Green areas indicate some stretching, and I tried to add seams to reduce the stretching. 
With the body of the plane, I was a bit uncertain at first, so I unwrapped one side for some reason. It was severely stretched as I forgot to separate the cockpit. After seeing the result, I removed the top seam running along the body and I unwrapped it to get a nice single piece. It has some stretching, but I was okay with that. I tried to remove all the hidden interior faces by selecting them in X-ray mode and pressing delete. With the six identical pipes, I unwrapped them identically so I could overlap them later. It would have made sense to unwrap identical parts before they were duplicated to avoid this repetitive process. Adding the seams is a tedious process and it took about an hour, just like the modeling. Once everything was unwrapped, I enabled the UV Packmaster 3 add-on. This is not free and it costs $39 for a single user, but I think it's worth it considering how tightly it can pack the UVs and how it handles overlapping of identical objects. I changed the main mode to aligning tools. When identical objects are selected, I click on Align Similar, which stacks the UVs on top of each other into the same place. This way, I'll only need to paint one place to colorize identical parts. I repeat that process for all identical parts. Be aware, I accidentally overlapped the circles of the wheel and the center wheel bolt so they were sharing the same UV space. It turned out okay since I wanted both parts red later, but be careful when you stack. I changed the main mode back to single tile and I clicked on pack to let the add-on find a good layout. Also notice that I've set the pixel margin to 32 and the texture size to 2048. This way the UVs will be packed so I can draw with a bleed margin of 16 pixels. It's important to paint with a bleed margin so you don't get visible seams as textures are reduced in resolution. Even if you don't have any plans to rescale your texture, the graphics card does this on its own with something called MIP mapping for objects that are drawn further away from the camera. I have lock overlapping enabled so the UVs that I overlapped earlier won't get separated again during the packing process. That's it for the UV unwrapping, let's start painting some textures. I select the object and I go to the material tab. I click on base color and change it to image texture. I create a new image with a resolution of 2048 by 2048 pixels and I set the base color to gray. I don't need an alpha channel, so I untick that. Remember, Blender does not save this texture automatically. I change to the new image in the left viewport and I go to save as and I give it a name. You'll need to keep saving your image through the texture painting process so you don't lose your hard work. In the Draw Tool panel, I click to create a new palette, and I define the colors that I plan to use. I press Tab to toggle between Edit Mode and Texture Paint Mode. In Edit Mode, I select faces that I want to mask, and when I tab to Texture Paint Mode, only my current selection will receive paint. Make sure to enable Paint Mask on the little cube icon at the top. Any faces that are shaded white will not be affected by your actions. I start by using the Fill tool to paint the major parts. The engine shield gets a different grey, the nose cone gets a red colour and the propeller gets a black colour. Then I start to paint the camo pattern. I switch the brush stroke to Line and I set the falloff of the brush so it gets sharper edges. I disable Normal falloff so I can paint at an angle. I use the Line tool for all the camo pattern work because I got cleaner edges that way, and I don't have to press hard on the pen tablet to get a solid color. Where the wing joins the plane, I need to disable occlude and paint over the joining area to remove the bright lines. It's scary to disable occlude because you'll probably accidentally paint on hidden parts of your objects, so you should probably spend some more time masking the specific areas than I did. I tried to space out the patterns evenly. Here you can also see why I did not want to mirror the texture. I wanted to ensure that the camo pattern would be different everywhere on the plane. I changed the brush size with the F key and I lowered the strength with Shift F. From the top view I enabled X-axis mirroring and I began to paint black lines where I wanted panels and wing details. Mirroring in paint mode was a lifesaver, not only to save time, but I would never be able to manually paint the same rudder details on both sides. At first I found it difficult to align the top and bottom parts of the lines on the upper and lower part of the wing. Then I remembered that I could disable occlude and backface culling to paint through the wing. Combined with the X mirroring, it was much easier to get the details in place. To copy the details from the top wing to the bottom wing, I kept occlude and backface culling disabled and I went with a very faint brush. I drew lines on the top wing that would also land on the bottom wing. 
Then I masked and hid the top wings by selecting them and pressing H. Now I could paint the lower wing using faint references. For the guns I wanted black circles to simulate the holes of a cooling mesh. First I tried to paint them manually, but I quickly got frustrated. I found that I could change the spacing value to something higher than 100%, so Blender would space out the dots by itself. Then I switched to the line stroke, and painting holes suddenly became very easy. I changed to a smaller brush and a brighter color in overlay blend mode, and I continued to paint edge wear around the holes. Some lines with occlude and backface culling disabled to create some creases in the metal. Remember to re-enable occlude and backface culling when you're done. I switched to the line tool and a bright small brush with low opacity in the overlay blend mode and I drew lines along all the inner edges of the metal panels. You have to go over all the panels so it gets a bit repetitive, but I don't think you have to be too precise when you're going for the hand painted look. So I was doing this pretty fast. And I forgot to re-enable occlude and backface culling, so I destroyed parts of the plane. I'll learn eventually, but I had to manually repaint the areas that were affected. With a larger, smoother brush and the multiply blend mode, I began to draw ambient occlusion shading. Around the interior edges and wherever you feel like less light would naturally land. Where the wing joins the body, you have the occlude issue again, so you should mask specific areas and disable occlude to get the best results. I skimped on that somewhat in fear of damaging the paint job again. For the engine shield, I drew panels just like I did on the body, and then I added some highlights. Then I switched to the normal paintbrush instead of lines, and I used a darker color in multiply blend mode and painted oil streaks coming out from the engine. I made an even smaller brush to paint in some additional details. For the cylinder head cover, I hid all the geometry except that one. I disabled occlude and backface culling and normal falloff, and then I used lines to draw bright and dark lines through the objects to simulate the cooling areas. The shading on the plane looked a bit too uniformed, so I went over some of the flaps rudders and darkened them with a darker shade. In the shading tab, I increased the metallic value. At the top of the viewport, you can change between the different built-in HDRI images. You can also change the rotation of the HDRI, and I really like how the HDRI lighting affects the models. Now, happy in the material preview mode, I started to add rivets. Like before, I used the line stroke with a spacing value of 1000, and I let Blender space out all the rivets. They don't get spaced out perfectly in the corners, but it was good enough for the hand-painted look. For the propeller, I painted a white stripe and a red stripe. Again, occlude, backface culling and normal falloff was disabled to make it go through the propeller on all sides. I imagine that the propeller gets some wear on the leading edge, so I painted bright edge wear there. The propeller uses the same UV for all four blades, so I only need to paint this once. Inspired by the edge wear on the propeller, I did the same thing for the wings. Using a bright brush in overlay mode, I painted along the leading edges of the wings with X mirroring to make them brighter. I disabled mirroring and added some unique details on all the wings. This part is really fun when you see the results updating in the material preview. It's difficult to know when to stop and I feel like I could go on forever. I could have added so much more to this plane, like stickers, text, hatches, cables, bullet holes, you name it. I did settle with some additional paint peeling off the inner panels. I used a brush in mix mode and I added some details around the panel edges. I found that the free hand paint brush with different brush sizes worked pretty good. I think that the shader and the HDRI lighting does most of the work at this point. My hand painting skills are not as good as this makes it look. Okay, now let's call the base color map done. Without any bump maps, normal maps or roughness maps, this is what the airplane looks like when it's rendered in cycles. I also added some spin to the propeller and enabled motion blur. I'm happy with the way it turned out, and I think it would work just like this in most games. But I did get curious about adding a normal map and a roughness map. I brought the texture into Photoshop and on a new layer I drew black lines over the panel edges. These lines will be used as indentations on a basic bump map. I created another layer and I drew white dots over all the rivets. These will stick out like little bumps. For the roughness map, I copied the engine shield to a new layer and I made it much brighter with higher contrast. I selected all the leading edges using the magic wand and I filled all those areas white. I merged the dark lines with the white dots onto a grey background and I exported it as a bump map. I put a grey background behind the roughness areas where white will be shiny and black will be matte and I exported that as a roughness map. In Blender, I added a texture node for the material and I loaded up the bump map. 
I added a bump node and plugged the color into height and then the bump normal node to the normal node of the material. I added another texture and loaded the roughness map. I plugged the color of that to the roughness node of the material. I got the colors wrong in my map, so I had to add an invert node to make the white parts shiny and the dark parts matte instead of the other way around. The texture painting took about 4 hours, which is a bit on the long side. It's a bit concerning if you need a lot of assets in a solo indie game, but I'm happy with the result. The bump and roughness maps could be created fairly quickly, especially with the UVs nicely unwrapped into larger pieces, and it adds another level of detail. Using a different HDRI image, the mood is quickly changed, and I love HDRI lighting. I thought it was a lot of fun to make, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks to my patrons, if you're a patron on the tutorial tier or above, then you can download this model because it's already uploaded with the textures included. It feels like I'm progressing a little bit when it comes to the texture painting and I think the most important lesson that I've learned so far, it's okay that it looks bad in the beginning because as you come along and you add some layers, then from a distance it looks better and better and uh, even third episode in now I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable I'm finding new tips and tricks all the time for example that line tool with the spacing that was cool the X mirroring that was super good being able to paint through the layers with the that dangerous occlude and fall off <laughs> thing scary still because I'm like repeatedly damaging my model but uh, lessons learned and it's, they're piling up so I think I'll become a little bit faster. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and come back next week for another video. Until then, take care and have a good one. Bye for now!